Quentin Johnston is an exceptional prospect, and I'm excited for us to butt heads here. So among 66 Power 5 wide receivers with at least 75 targets, Quentin Johnston ranked tied for number 11 in targets per outrun, number 3 in yards per outrun. He was number 1 in broken and missed tackles forced per reception, and he was number 3 in uh, broken tackle, total broken tackles. I think, Man, if they switch I, him to running back, he's going to be awesome. I think... I touched on the idea of of the wide receiver position getting smaller and Terry McLaurin looking being an ex receiver, but just being a little bit smaller than they typically have been in the past. I think that's what Quentin Johnston is. And I think that he landed in a situation that is extremely exciting. I don't think that he will compete target share wise with Jordan Addison for the first month or so, but a little bit of foreshadowing. I'm going to keep something in my back pocket here. I have very high hopes and high expectations for Quentin Johnston as the season progresses. He got better and better, man. He went from 22 catches to 33, then to 60. He went from 47 yards total receiving yards to, what, 600 plus and then over 1,000. Target share went up every year. Catch rate went up every year. There's very few wide receivers that over the course of those three years they just progressively get better and better and better. And then he came out early. So he's got a lot going for him. I am shook by the pro day 40 time. I am. Okay. I got, I got to tell you, I'm real shook. The, the athleticism is not what you want, right? What you don't want from a wide receiver is where the burst score is their best workout metric. The, the receivers with the high, the high burst scores that are lower than their 40 times and they have bad agility scores, it's Dante Moncrief, it's Josh Doxson. There, there's, a, there's a long history of this shape of workout metrics, and it, it hasn't worked out well. Now, that where a lot of the metrics you're citing are once the ball is in his hands, where the opposite is true with Addison, where he is winning before the ball gets to his hands. He is the one creating separation. And especially in Dynasty, I'm more looking at a Deontay Johnson because I want that safe floor. I have this guy for his career. I want the guy that's going to go out and command targets with separation. I'm worried about Johnston there. That's my one worry. He's going to get out there and he's going to be a field stretcher that's not fast enough. And he's going to be a player they need to scheme touches for and whenever i hear that a shiver runs down my spine because i heard that about Tavon austin i've heard that about so many wide receivers kevin white right there's just there's a long list of receivers that he has similarities to echoes of and almost all of them have busted that is my fear los angeles has the 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 need for speed so to speak and I see 12.6 uh, average depth of target tied for number 14 in the, the qualifying wide receiver group I mentioned earlier. Uh, he's shown, to me, he's shown an ability to win downfield. Now, again, they do need speed, and they might be trying to pigeonhole the guy or, or sort of square peg round hole by putting him in a... The Jalen Guyton role? Yeah, but I, I have less concerns about his talent and i like it won't surprise me if what we see ultimately is they try to get him to, to run down the field more and more and it's he's just more suited in the traditional like I, I guess maybe like maybe they'll try him in like a sammy watkins kind of role where it's like an x receiver who plays further downfield sort of deal but mike evans is the one who's been prowling the deep end for a long time or excuse me mike williams and he's not that fast, but it would just make a lot more sense to me for the pieces to mesh together if they just continue to send him downfield and they have Quentin Johnston work in the intermediate to deep area and they just play another year without. You think that that's who, what they might do, but I can tell you they're not going to do that. They've actually been bringing Mike Williams closer to the line of scrimmage. He's getting older. He can't win downfield. He's actually been better on slants. You know, as his career has 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 aged, he's aged. Mike Williams has aged actually better than people think, or most people think. What I'm saying is, Quinton Johnston won in a way in college 
that has a very difficult time of translating, or at least a low probability of translating, when these other players like Jordan Addison, who is smaller, right, who is less athletic, but the way he wins in college translates well to what they're going to ask him to do and how he'll be able to win at the NFL level. That's why I prefer Addison. Yes, it's possible that Johnston outproduces Addison this year and he hits his upside. And in that case, I'm going to have some some Johnston in uh, seasonal leagues and best ball. Absolutely. But when it comes to taking a guy in the first round where first round busts in rookie drafts can be hugely damaging in dynasty, I ain't doing it, man. I ain't taking that chance. Hey, you like that video? Be sure to subscribe and activate those alerts so you get notified as soon as new videos drop. And be sure to check out playerprofiler.com. We have all the tools for you to dominate every type of fantasy league. We have a draft kit, Dynasty Deluxe, Data Analysis, DFS Dominator, and don't forget the player rankings to rule them all.